Welcome to SE Live. My name is Kyle Gerhardt, and I'm going to be interviewing my good friend Eddie Mapp today. Eddie, we're happy to have you on the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do for a living? I worked with Black Label Society with Zach Wild. Um, worked with Evanescence since 2003. I had the uh, pleasure of working with uh, Stone Temple Pilots and uh, Paramore and yeah, th 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 there's a few to start. There's a few of the ones to start off with. That's awesome. SE was nominated this year for an award for the uh, the V Kick and the V Beat, which is pretty awesome. And uh, you had a hand in uh, helping out with some of that stuff. And let's let's talk about that. Tom and the guys called me and asked me just to, to throw some ideas out there for uh, just drum mics. So uh, I don't know for fun in my time off, I read frequency response charts and I read the manual you know so like I sent yeah. them just I don't know some different ideas you know tonally like to me the goal is like always trying to like get to the end result I choose my microphones based on where I want the mix to go yeah after having a lot of different options and stuff over the years it was just like all right well how do we approach this differently how do we get to the end result quicker instead of everything being a flat microphone. It's like, that's wonderful, but the world isn't flat, you know? So it's like, right. how do we make something exciting, you know? And mainly based on not a specific style of music at all, because I think those these mics like apply to a lot of different genres, but just, I don't know, just a different approach of like, once again, how do we get to the end goal quicker? Talk a little bit about like where you started and where you ended up and like, you know, what, what where you're at yep and i mean now i'm at the v beat uh you know i think like everybody's evolution you know it goes through a lot many different manufacturers started out with the sm57 drummer knocks the cap off the mic well we need something else let's get a beta 57 okay let's try a beta 56 it's smaller and eh, it's too dark okay let's try something else i had a, a audio technica 650 that worked great as well. Went to a Sennheiser model, went to an Audix i5, went to the Telefunken M80. And this was, you know, I mean, probably a 15 year progression of stuff, you know, but still always trying to move forward. And that's led up to the VB, which I think I'm getting some of the most natural drum sounds that, yeah, I don't know, in an easier fashion, like, you know? Trying yeah, to keep it simple. I mean, that's that's great to see the iteration of being, you know, someone who's obviously um, played a lot of big shows in a lot of places, and you know, you've you've mic'd up a you know a few snare drums in your in your day. So uh, being able to say, hey, you know, this this mic works pretty good right now, and this is uh, the current choice. I mean, that says a lot. That's what I look for. You know, just like something I. I I don't want a thin, hollow, phasey, you know? Like, once again, I want what's going to be the most consistent thing to punch through these difficult rooms that we have to mix in. Right. Uh, like, what's going to get to the back seat, you know? Like, clear. Like, the, to me, that that's the whole goal with, like, uh, my version of it. Yeah, no, and, you know, obviously you're, uh, you're known for having a fantastic drum sound in the industry. Uh, you know, many people talk about how good your drums sound, so it's cool that you're uh, able to use the, uh, the V-Beat products to uh, achieve that sound. Let's talk about the V-Kick for a minute. Um, did you have any hand in, uh, you know, any ideas that were put into that, Mike? Yeah, um, and once again, back to sitting around on days off reading frequency response charts and stuff like that it was fun to experiment with a microphone that wasn't flat that had a tailored frequency response so it's like okay can we take this and do something else with it you know like maybe we can give different some other options you know and i mean that was my inspiration for my input into the microphone and i think they came up with a unique design you know that it's not copying anything it's its own unique thing that gives you a lot of variety right no and i think uh the dip switches are, are probably the biggest thing on the mic that make it great is being able to do that you know low cut that you need to do or you know that high boost or doing both together um you know it gives you a lot of flexibility on one mic yeah i mean like doing a jazz project the other day once again it's like mm, hit that dip switch all right, we're already there, you know, or just whatever, or tomorrow. All right, it's some metal metal project. All right, there's the, you know, the modern thing or whatever. It's a, but there's no rules to any of it, right? 
Right. Yeah, so, you know, put the mic in the right place, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it helps. It's like Outback. No rules, just right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, man. So um, what have you been doing? Uh, 2020 has been a, a weird year for a lot of people. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Um, not stopping. Playing more guitar, uh, playing music. I uh, worked on a, a film project recently. Um, bit working on this live stream world you know if that's where we need to be right now but uh, um, doing whatever just to keep music kicking and screaming yeah man that's awesome well uh thank you so much for uh taking the time to do this interview today uh we look forward to hearing more from you and seeing more ideas come out and thank you so much for being part of the se family and doing what you do thanks man